Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're going to be starting a new series of Get Good at Blender. So this is the updated version for Blender 2.8 and I will start off nice and easy again and become more complicated with later episodes. The idea behind this is that you practice your modeling and try and figure out for yourself ways in which you can model shapes so you can develop that understanding and become a better modeler. The way it works is I'll show you a few shapes, you have a go and then I talk about how I made it. And these shapes are designed so that they get more complicated each time and you learn new skills as you're going along. Now it is important that you've done some sort of beginner course and you can see some of my beginner courses in the description below. Also there's the Blender Fundamentals on their YouTube channel and it's well worth going through each of those. And this is meant as a compliment to my other courses, all of which you can find on my website or in the playlist on my YouTube channel and they're all absolutely free. So let's start getting good at Blender. So here's the first shape, have a look. Now see if you can reproduce that on your own. Okay, so this one's a fairly easy one, but I'm sure there's people out there who have gone the complicated way of doing it, and understandably so. But if I click on the shape, you can see that these are all separate objects, and that's the easy way of modeling it. I'm sure many of you will have gone in and done a loop cut across the top here and here, and here and here, and then extruded these legs out. But sometimes you have to look at the objects and think, do they really need to be all one object or can it have separate elements? A good rule when you're thinking about this is are they separate objects in real life? So the legs are actually separate to the table top. So they may as well be their own object. Yes, you could argue that it gets frustrating if you have to select them all to move them, but you can just select them all and press Control J to join them together like this. Yes, you will have overlapping geometry in here, for example, but that's not actually as big a deal as you might imagine. Okay, I'll very quickly go through modeling this one. So I'll just bring my cursor over to here, Shift A, Mesh Cube. I'll scale it in the Z axis. And remember to use your numpad to go to your different viewport, or if you haven't got a numpad, you can go up here to the top view using the Cartesian coordinates that you can see here. So I'll scale this in the X axis. So it's roughly the same size, move it into position, and one on my numpad, or use the Cartesian coordinates, and move it in the z-axis, scale it a bit in the z as well, and we've roughly got the same shape there. Shift A to add, cube. You can also go to the add menu here, of course, but with my cube selected, let's go to top view, scale it down, and move this into position. So there's my first leg there. Then one on my keyboard, grab that and move it into position. And I can press G then Z to constrain it to the Z axis so it will only move up and down because I've already set the X and Y position from top view. So that's roughly in position there. That's great. I could scale in the Z and then move it down in the Z axis. But what's easier is to go into edit mode at this point and then three to select face mode or you can go up here to face mode. Oh, and of course that's tab to get into edit mode. So you've got edit mode and object mode up here as well. Select the bottom face and G to grab in the Z axis to pull it down. Now you can see I've tapered in the end slightly, so there's a taper from the top to bottom. I'm going to show you how to do that together afterwards, but it would be a good idea to do that now, because then when I duplicate this shape, it will have the taper at the bottom for each of them. But for now, let's tab back into object mode, let's go to top view, and we'll duplicate this with Shift D, and then Y to bring it across the other side. And actually it would be helpful to be in wireframe mode, so Z to get this Pi menu, wireframe mode, and then I can see where the other one is as well and how far away it is from the edge. So grab in the Y to make it a bit closer. Then I can select both these with shift left click, shift D to duplicate, and then grab in the X axis and make them roughly the same distance. Now I was saying about the bottoms being tapered. So let's go back into solid mode, Z on your keyboard and then across to solid mode. And I can select all these, and this is new to 2.8, and I can go into edit mode with all these separate objects at the same time. So press tab into edit mode, and they've already got their bottom faces selected because that's the last thing selected. Now let's scale those down, and oh, you can see they're being pulled into the middle. Have a think for a moment why that is. I'll right click to cancel that. So that's because I've got medium point, and that's the default transformation pivot point, as you can see at the bottom there. If I go to individual origins, so when I scale now, it will scale at the middle, of each of those shapes. So that's useful to know that you've got this transformation pivot point option menu here. And individual origins, you can scale from the middle of just those shapes. Okay, so that was the table. I'll select all those and press M to move it to a new collection. 
So I'll call this table two. So M is to move to a collection and whatever you have selected will move into that collection over the right hand side here. And I can then hide that really easily. Okay, so let's have a look at the next object. This time I do want you to model it as one shape to practice a few different things. It's not the best looking chair, but it's practicing our modeling skills. If you need any hints, E to extrude and control R for loop cuts. Okay, let's hide this table very briefly and have a go at doing this. So I'll shift right click to move my cursor over here to the side, shift A to add mesh cube. And I'll start with the middle point. So sometimes it's best to start with the biggest objects or the biggest part of the object, but it really varies. So let's scale this down and scale in the Z until we've got the sort of chair top there. I'll just move it so it's next to the other one. So let's press tab to go into edit mode. So I'm going to need four loop cuts. So control R to set one loop cut, use your wheel to up the loop cuts. And I've got four there. Now I can left click once and move them about if I want. And you can left click twice quickly to keep them in that position. Or if you're in this mode with one left click, you can right click. So you cancel any movement that you've been doing. Hopefully that made sense. Into top view, and we want loop cuts going the other way as well. So control R using the wheel, four loop cuts, left click will get you into this movement mode and right click will cancel any of that movement. So at the moment I'll have my chair legs coming out of these four points. That's why we need four loop cuts. So I want to be able to grab these two loop cuts and move them up to the side. These two are moved in this way. So Alt, left click will select an edge loop like that. Shift, Alt, left click will select another edge loop. So grab in the Y axis, move those towards the edge. You can go quite close to the edge here. These two, Alt, left click, Shift, Alt, left click, grab in the Y, and then these two, Alt, left click, Shift, Alt, left click, grab in the X this time, and these two. Okay, so now I've got a point where I can extrude out these shapes. So three to go into face mode, or face mode up there, select those four faces, Let's go to front view. Actually, side view would make more sense with three on your numpad, or you can use the Cartesian coordinates up there. E to extrude and pull it down to the floor. So there we've got our chair base. Now we need to extrude this back support here. So let's select these two here, and E to extrude and pull it up to about there. E to extrude again and pull those upwards. So now we've got a link between there, E to extrude again, and E to extrude again. So how do we connect these two. Now some people may have selected one and E to extrude and just pulled it out that way and overlap them. That's bad form and bad modeling because you've got overlapping geometry that's right on top of each other and it will create some sort of flicker effect when you try to render it. You could use snapping to snap it to the edge there, but a much easier way is to select those two faces and go to the edge menu. Control E is the shortcut and there's bridge edge loops, which is the third one down. And the great thing about this is if I go to the wireframe mode, it's even deleted that face here and here because we don't want faces inside our objects. Back into solid mode with Z and let's select this one and this one, Control E, bridge edge loops. And there we have our beautiful looking chair. Okay, so let's bring back our table and I'll move this chair to the other side. RZ180 and we've got a bit of a dining table going on. Okay, so the next thing for you to model is this bottle. So they're drinking some wine. So have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully a relatively easy shape for you. I'll go to top view, shift right click to move my cursor and shift A to add a cylinder. I've set mine to 16 because I quite like that chunky look, but you can have it at 32, it doesn't make too much difference. 32 is the default. So let's just start scaling this down and moving it into position. Always use your orthographic side view, front view and top view for this sort of thing. And let's scale it, shift Z, so it's not scaling in the Z axis. So S then Shift Z will scale in all but the Z axis. Okay, so into edit mode with tab. I'm in face mode, so I'll have to select that top face, grab it and move it upwards a bit, scale it out just a touch so it's got that interesting shape and just extrude it up. Scale it in a bit, extrude it upwards, scale it in a bit and extrude upwards. And I'm not particularly being precise here, am I? But I'll leave it like this for the moment so you can see how you can adjust it afterwards. Now there's a couple of ways to do the top. I find the easy way is to press E and left click. That means you've got an extrusion there. It might not look like it, but if I go to wireframe mode, you can see those tiny faces 
are actually in there. And that can be a common beginner mistake that they've extruded and forgotten that they've extruded by left clicking. So back to solid mode. So I've got this extrusion, I can now scale it up. It looks a bit weird at the moment, but it's creating that sort of bottle top. And then E to extrude again, and you pull it upwards. And it creates that sort of shape. And there's no extra faces inside. It's nice and clean. Back to solid mode. Now you might want to I to inset and pull a face in, and then E to extrude to pull it down to create an actual bottle top if you like. But how do I reshape it now? It's a bit awkward. Well, with face mode selected, I can select a face loop by selecting one of the edges going across the loop. So if I Alt right click on this edge going down here, I can select that entire face loop. I want to select these ones as well. So Shift, Alt, left click on that line going across the loop all the way around. And I've got all those now. I can then scale those in and that makes it really short. So let's undo that. Scale Shift Z will scale it in, but not with the height. And we've got this interesting bottle shape here. Maybe I want to grab that in the Z axis, move it up a bit. And hopefully you can see how you can start editing the shape. And if I wanted to look exactly like this one, then I'd go to edge mode or two on your keyboard, select this edge loop here, Alt, left click, and then I can edge slide. GG will slide the edges like this. So around there and then scale it in. Okay, so a few new tools coming in at the moment. Right, let's have a look at the last one. Back into object mode and let's see what we've got there. We've got a bowl. So have a go at that. Okay, so this one shouldn't be too complicated, but I'm going to do it a different way because you can make all these different shapes in many different ways. So seven to go to top view, shift right click, and let's start with a cylinder. So shift A to add, mesh cylinder. Now this is a bigger circle, so I can up the polygon count a bit, and maybe I'll go back to the default this time to 32, and let's scale that down. So I'm starting with the sort of solid point, which is the bottom point, and it's kind of the biggest uniform point of the object. Hopefully I'm making sense there. I'm going to press full stop on my numpad to zoom into my object. Scale Z. And let's just move that upwards. G then Z. So it's above the table like that. I might scale it in the Z slightly again. Now notice I should have done that in, in edit mode and grab the top face because it's above the surface again. So I'm going to have to move it back down. And instead I should have gone to edit mode at that point and selected that top face and just moved that around in the Z axis. That would have made more sense, wouldn't it? Anyway, with that top face selected, I can then extrude that up. And I'm just going to do it once. You'd think I'd extrude it up, scale it, extrude up, scale it, but then you can end up with some wobbly geometry. It's easier to do it this way. So get it roughly the same height as the other one. Scale. It's a very sort of sharp looking bowl. But then I can add a loop cut in here. So Control R to add a loop cut. Scale that out slightly. And yes, you could go in, add another loop cut and scale that out and roughly do it by eye. But there's a great command, Control B. And that's the bevel command. And that will create a nice smooth curve for me. And you can use your wheel if you want to make it look smoother or add rings. Okay, so let's grab the top face, inset it with I, and then let's extrude that downwards in the Z axis. So go all the way to the bottom. I'm just gonna do it by I at the moment. Press scale to move it inwards to about there. And then let's have a loop cut again in the middle. Control R, double left click to set that. Scale it outwards. I'm just gonna do it by eye again. And you can see when I'm overlapping the other geometry. So I'll overlap a bit and then come in so I can see where I am. Have a good look around, make sure you're not overlapping anywhere. Then Control B to bevel. And there we've got a bowl. Okay, so maybe you can do a bit of homework now and you can try and do a knife and fork, some table mats, some wine glasses, and come up with an interesting dining room scene. Let me know how you get on in the comments below, or you can show off your work in the Discord server. And those links are in the description. So I hope this helps, and watch out for more episodes of Get Good at Blender 2.8. See you next time.